a meal is always a symbol of fellowship. We do not take our meals just for physical sustenance, but also for fellowship. It is a time when we gather together as a people, where we grow in love, in mutual understanding, and most of all, we grow in fellowship with one another. Happiness in life is always portrayed in terms of a banquet, in terms of fellowship between the bride, the church, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Where all of us are gathered together as a community of faith, as a community of sons and daughters of God, where there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, and there will be joy and eternal happiness. It is when we lived in the house of the Lord that we will find perfect peace and perfect joy. And this comes at the end of our life. But how can we be sure that this promise is real, that it is not just a pie in the sky? How could this be a reality in our life? Jesus is the one that came to restore our life, to make us wholesome again. It is in anticipation when after death, we will be restored to fullness with God and in God. But that is not all. We are told that Jesus not just has come to restore humanity by removing all illnesses and sicknesses. He has come to feed us with the bread of life. When Jesus comes, he comes to give us all in plenty. And that is what the Eucharist does. How could Jesus be given to everyone? Precisely, it is an anticipation of the Last Supper when Jesus instituted the Eucharist so that all of us, in our hunger, in our pain, in our desire to be healed or to be reconciled with Him or to experience His love, the Church invites us today to continue to receive the Eucharist to be present for the Eucharist celebration so that we can be nurtured by the preaching of the Word of God and be strengthened as we receive the Eucharist, the body and blood of our Lord. We cannot do without the spiritual food that comes from Jesus because it is this communion with Him that will help us to live out a life of love and service. So, having received the Eucharist, we are called to share. It is in our sharing with the suffering, those who are poor. It is in our fellowship with them that we help each other to encounter the eschatological life, a life that is meant to be lived in fullness when we die. So my dear brothers and sisters, we should continue to give hope uh, to one another. And uh, this hope we can receive as we participate, as we celebrate, particularly the sacraments, whether of reconciliation, the sacrament of Eucharist, so that we can continue to be nurtured in our faith. And this is ultimately a preparation, of course, for us, the ultimate coming, so that we can be in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And this is where we know that the Lord Certainly, he will lead us there so that at that place, there will be no more suffering and pain.